What's up friends, I'm officially done streaming Path of Exile for the rest of the Lake of Calandra update. So today I wanted to talk about some of my final thoughts and impressions on the League, summarize how far we got, and uh, talk about our future plans and things like that. So, first things first, as much as the start sucked, and as much as Arch Nemesis still sucks, I actually ended up having a pretty good time with the League as a whole. Uh, it, it kind of felt like I was having fun in spite of the state of the game, rather than because of the state of the game, but after the iterations and and, and things they they fixed and changed and adjusted it went from really really bad to bearable so once it kind of got out of its way a little bit it, it, it became an enjoyable experience we played the whole league as a chain hook berserker which probably contributed to the the difficulties we faced but by the time i got to tier 16s it actually started to look kind of end game viable so that was pretty satisfying in its own right while I was farming for currency this league, I ended up figuring out my new favorite atlas strategy, which is strong boxes, harvest, shrines, and whatever nodes I can for whatever master missions I'm running at the time. So it, it kind of requires a little bit of switching around, but it, it's like legitimately a good time. This strategy ended up leading us to multiple days, sometimes in a row, where I w was getting more than 10 divines in a single day for basically no investment. I think the only investment I really did on any of my tier 16s was... Ambush scarabs and fragments. Like I, I, it was like one ambush scarab and three sacrifice fragments. And you know, once every fifteen maps or so, we'd have two divines pop out of a strong box, or a divine pop out of a boss, or we'd get the uh, the loot goblin with some beast theory mods on it, and that would drop a divine. You know, it was on top of all that, we'd get like harvest, dropping tons of life juice, and, and that stuff sells for a ton. So yeah, it it just kind of all added up, and we ended up getting into some some pretty good gear by the end of it. So that leads me into my next point. However bad the changes were to harvest crafting, as much as people dislike them, for me as a person who doesn't really craft hardly at all in any league, it didn't really matter that much. What mattered the most to me with harvest was the fact that we could trade the life juice, and it sold for a ton of money compared to how much you actually get in tier 16s uh, with all of the investments from the Atlas tree. So Harvest alone probably accounted for at least 30% of the money that I made this league, and that made farming it a good time, even if crafting with it wasn't as good as it used to be. As far as the league mechanic is concerned, the Lake of Calandra was pretty underwhelming. There, were, I think there were a couple reasons for that. For one, the rewards at the start and for a very long time were, were not great. And even now, they're not always good, but like now that we get more currency chests out of the most recent update for it, that makes it feel a little better because the vines pop out of those with decent regularity. Uh, the rewards from the Reflecting Mists were Almost always bad. I, like I think I, I found maybe two pieces of jewelry that were kind of usable, but there was always like a really, really, really bad drawback with whatever decent thing I found. So I've seen some people get like stupid lucky and get like a hundred percent crit multiplier and no real downsides or anything like that. But ultimately, the vast majority of the time, whatever came out of the reflecting mist was just totally worthless. Outside of unsatisfying rewards, I think the biggest issue I had with the lake was just how hard enemies scaled with difficulty. I know you gotta manage your risk so you can maximize your reward or whatever, but the thing is with on difficult on the difficulty one room, even on a level eighty three lake, it doesn't it, it it never mattered what kind of room you put in that first difficulty room, it was a total stop. There was no challenge at all. Nothing could really do damage to you if you have a build that's even remotely capable of doing tier 16 maps. And then, you know, you do you go through like 2 through 5, and the enemies are maybe a little more solid, but they're not bad, they're, they're just doable. But once you hit that difficulty 9, it, it just kind of felt like running into a wall compared to the earlier rooms, like... And, and then each difficulty after 9 felt progressively worse. And, and maybe that's not an issue that people felt when they were playing, you know, Giga Chad meta builds with like 10 billion DPS or whatever, but for me playing like... Did a halfway min maxed meme build it, it it felt pretty bad so instead of feeling like i was having fun anytime i ran a lake of calendar i was just kind of stressed like if the difficulty got up to 10 or anything like that just because i felt like after that point if i if i didn't play perfectly then i'd just get one shot so i didn't really like that part of it and the rewards didn't feel good so all in all it, it, it was a pretty lackluster mechanic for me despite that i somehow made it to 34 out of 40 challenges on stream we took down the Eater of Worlds, the Searing Exarch, Cyrus, Cortex, Oshabi, and the Uber Elder. The only boss that I felt like I just couldn't do was the Maven, and rather than that being because of my damage being like far too low or my build just not being tanky enough, 
it felt more like there was a problem with how Chainhook operates mechanically. Any anytime I attempted her, I could get through the, the first phase all right, but then the, the first brain phase would happen and we would just get eviscerated because Chainhook pulls you so close to whatever enemy you're targeting that when we went to DPS the brain, we were like almost inside of the brain's character model. So as the, the beams were spinning around, it was really hard to do any real amount of DPS without accidentally tapping the beam and then having my regen and leech shut off for like 10 seconds or whatever the timer is on that. And so it, when I made the slightest misstep in that phase, I would just get blasted by the bosses because all of my recovery was basically in leech and I needed my life regen to counteract the self degen that Berserker has built in. So I didn't really feel too bad about the fact that we couldn't do Maven. It just kind of felt unfortunate that that's how chain hook works. Uh, that you have to be like right up on whoever you're targeting and even still like there were there were a couple attempts where we got pretty close to getting through the first brain phase so it felt like if i had maybe 30 percent more damage or so i could have gotten through it just by hitting and running in a decent amount of time but with with the damage being where it currently is at like 3 million dps without berserk it just doesn't feel like enough so i think we could get there it, it's just a matter of farming a bunch more and I, I don't really feel like doing that on stream so for now as far as content is concerned i'm satisfied i'll probably play more path of exile off stream just to get the last couple challenges i need for the tier 4 wings because we're only like four challenges away from that but for my channel, it'll be back to Escape from Tarkov for me until the next league starts. For those that don't know what Escape from Tarkov is, it is a hyper-realistic session-based survival shooter. It has a lot of complex systems, kind of in the same way that Path of Exile has a lot of complex systems for ARPGs. There's no talent trees or anything like that in Tarkov, but between the gun customization and the amount of thought you have to put into your loadout and how you go about running through each raid in Tarkov and like planning out what you need to do, where you need to go, how to get there, how to deal with people you do run into, all that. There's a lot to it in, in a similar way to how there's a lot to Path of Exile, even to do the, the simplest of things. So if you're a Path of Exile fan who also enjoys first-person shooters from time to time and you haven't already, uh, I highly recommend you check out Escape from Tarkov. I have a lot of VODs from previous Escape from Tarkov streams in a playlist on my channel that I'll link in the description below if you want to check it out now. Or if you keep your eye on my channel, starting this week, my normal streams on Thursdays and Fridays will be Escape from Tarkov instead of Path of Exile. So you can check it out then and I can explain in a little more detail some of the systems and, and things you deal with when playing that game. Or if you're really only here for Path of Exile, that's okay too. Just know we'll be in a bit of a content drought, Path of Exile, until the next league starts. I'd like to get into a schedule where I have enough content from both games to not run into a drought for either one, because I know there are a lot of people who watch my channel for either one game or the other, and I don't really want to have a time period where there's absolutely nothing for, for those people. But for now, I don't really have any concrete plans on what exactly I should be doing for Path of Exile outside of streams. So I'm currently in the process of of brainstorming ideas for that. Just know that whatever I do settle on, I probably won't be able to start producing it until the start of the next league at the earliest. But yeah, that's pretty much where we're at for now. So Lake of Glander, you been fun, but we're done with you. We're moving on to Escape from Tarkov until next league. So I appreciate everyone who's come through and watched me struggle with Chainhook through all of the arch nemesis shenanigans and all, all the stuff we dealt with there. Even if you don't want to watch any Escape from Tarkov, I hope to see y'all at the very least next league and yeah i look forward to seeing what kind of silly shenanigans we can get ourselves into in the future yeet